Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 46th video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. In the last video, I introduced us to the Minimax algorithm, which is um, our introduction to artificial intelligence. Our final engine is not going to use uh, Minimax, but it's going to be built on an algorithm that uses Minimax. Um, so let's just uh, go back and summarize what we learned uh, from the Wikipedia article on Minimax. A Minimax algorithm is a recursive algorithm for choosing the next move in an end player game, usually a two player game. Okay, and I, I recommend that you guys read this entire Wikipedia article, but uh, <clears throat> if you recall in our last video, there was a diagram here which I used to explain visually how the algorithm operates. So let's bring that diagram up again. And what you can see is that the algorithm would stop here at the top level and um, it would start here at the top level and let's say the white player represents uh, circles and the black player represents squares. Um, we would start with it um, enumerating the tree with no score, right? So these, you know, obviously in this tree we're seeing the uh, nodes already having been scored, but when you start the algorithm, the nodes would not be scored. The only thing that you would do is you would traverse the tree by by executing the moves, right? And once you reached the leaf level of your tree, because again, remember, we can't enumerate all the possible game trees for chess. It's too, the game state's too large. So what we do is we designate a cutoff. In this example, we have stopped after a depth of four, Right, so we we say that we've made four ply moves in this, uh, in, in this game diagram, and so we would say, enumerate down to depth four, score those boards, uh, using your evaluation function, and then propagate back up the score, um, that is either the minimizing score, or the maximizing score, all the way back up to the top, right? So. At this level, we've come all the way down to depth four. We've scored 10 and positive infinity. Again, positive infinity means that the game is ended. So um, <clears throat> positive in, or negative infinity means that the game has ended. And depending on whether it's, if it's positive, that means that white has won. Or ne if it's negative, it means black has won. That's the convention that we're using, right? Because we said that the more positive the score the, uh, the more white is winning and the more negative the score, that means black is winning, okay? So we then propagate those scores back up to the top. In this example, the min of 10 in positive infinity is 10, the min of five is five, the min of negative 10 is 10 minus 10, the min of minus, or excuse me, the min of seven and five is five, the min of negative infinity is negative infinity. The min of minus 7 and minus 5 is minus 7. And then switch over to the max. Max of 10 of, and 5 is 10. Minus 10, minus 10. 5 and minus infinity. The max of that is 5. Minus 7 propagates up. And then from here, again, we go back to minimizing. 10 and minus 10 minimizes to minus 10. 5 and minus 7 minimizes to minus 7. Minus 10 and minus... 7 max to minus 7, right? So we can mitigate the damage. So here what we're saying here is white's turn to move, and the best move to, from white to make is whatever this move is, it mitigates the damage um, that w will be done to white uh, here in this move after four levels deep of analysis, okay? So now uh, going back to uh, the code base, we, all we did in our code base was we introduced the notion of um, the Minimax class which has this, implements this interface. We're using uh, the strategy design pattern for executing a move, right? And we also introduced one other interface which was board evaluator. Again, using the strategy interface because we may have different types of board evaluators. Right now we're just hard coding it to null um, and I want to get the skeletal structure for our Minimax algorithm written and then go back and uh, uh, fill out the evaluation function. So here in the execution of this function it's actually really neat. 
Minimax is co-recursive, okay? And if you guys don't understand recursion yet, I highly recommend that you go out and research it. Maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have other video series, maybe in a, another video series, I'll do a basic explanation of recursion, but one of the prerequisites for this video is for you got to, you have to understand recursion. Um, a recursive function is basically just a function that calls itself, uh, right? So here, execute, um, is going to return the best move, okay? And what we're going to see is that there's going to be two helper methods that we'll need, min and max, right? So let's say public int min. Final port board and final int dat. and public int max, final board, board, final int depth, okay? So the, these two methods correspond to, in my visual analysis, where we were propagating the min or the max, okay? And so let's format this code a little bit, okay? So what we'll start out with saying, and these methods are going to look very similar. We'll say if the depth is equal to zero, right, then now we want to simply return this dot board evaluator dot evaluate the board with that depth. Okay. And otherwise, we'll need one more uh, check here. Um, <clears throat> probably if it's going to be, it's going to be if depth is equal to zero, and let's comment this out, but it's going to be if depth is equal to zero or, um, game over, then you want to evaluate the board. Um, but we'll get to that later. So we'll say int lowest scene value is equal to integer dot max value. Right, and I'll explain this in a second. So we're gonna loop through for final move move in board dot current player dot get legal moves. Then um, final move transition is move transition is equal to board dot current player dot make the move and if the move transition get move status oops is done final int current value is equal to haha max of move transition get transition board uh, set minus one and if the current value is less than or equal to the lowest scene value then simply update the value of lowest scene value And after you've visited all of the moves, return the lowest seen value. Okay. So now I have some explaining to do as usual. Right. So what we're saying here is that um, it might help to have this diagram up visually next to the code while we're looking at the code. Right. So if you are in the process of minimizing right? If you're in the process of minimizing, you want to go through at your level, right? In At your node in the tree. So let's, I'm going to pick on this particular node here, right? This, this box node that's labeled five. We're going to go through all of, there's only two possible moves, right? We're going to go through those, we're going to go through the current players, two possible moves, and we're going to make each move, okay? 
we're going to make each move and so and and really at this level even though it, it is kind of mind-boggling that min calls max and max calls you'll see that min max calls min and min calls max you don't have to think about that all you have to do is say at all I'm trying to do is propagate back up the lowest value so I start right I start with a variable called lowest seen value and I give it the highest number possible right because uh, you know obviously and this is like a really big number but it's just basically a um, you know an initial sentinel value and I want to go through and no, no valid board can have this possible value that's really the key right it's the highest possible value and we're never going to evaluate a board to the score um, so I want to go through all the legal moves I want to make those moves and score them and I want to and and I want to return the lowest value of that of that of all those legal moves so I'm going to I'm going to loop through all the legal moves and I'm going to um, record what the lowest value current value is right so if current value that you've evaluated here is less than the lowest seen value then say the, the lowest seen value is current value right so the first time we come through it'll be seven right so current value will get a score of seven never mind what happens in max it'll get a value of seven and if current value is less than lowest seen value, lowest seen value is currently set to integer.max, which is a really big number, then yes, we're going to come in here and we're going to say lowest seen value is 7. Then we're going to loop back around and we're going to evaluate 5 to 5. So is 5 lower than 7? Yes, it is. So lowest seen value is now 5, right? To drive this point home, let's say there was one more branch in this node and it was 10, Right, so current value would evaluate to 10. Is 10 lower than 5? No, it's not. So skip that if statement. Okay? So now we know the lowest value seen at this level is going to be 5. We're going to return that 5. Okay? And I think in my mind the trickiest part of, of, of understanding this algorithm is that it's a co-recursive routine Again, min calls max, max calls min, and the score is propagated back upwards in the tree, right? So you come first you come all the way down in this tree, you evaluate at your leaf level, and then you propagate, you have to propagate that score back up. And that's where recursion helps you. You get that for free in recursion. That's, that's how recursion works, okay? So now that we understand how min works, let's go ahead and implement max. And that's going to be really easy because we're just going to copy and paste. Right? And the base case is going to be identical. The only difference is now, instead of lowest seen value, we're going to have highest seen value. And guess what? Highest seen value is going to get min value which is going to be an impossibly small number that we'll never evaluate to, right? And we're just going to say hi, if current value is greater than or equal to highest seen value, highest seen value is equal to current value, and return highest seen value, right? So very similar, easy to understand. Um, and again, here you can apply that same technique to a maximizing level, right? So here, the max of 10 and 5 is going to be 10, right? So we're going to enumerate these two possible moves. And first, we're going to start with integer.min value, which is going to be a very, um, it's going to be a very negative number, right? And so what, what's good, what, what's going to be a large negative number. Um, so we're going to come in here and we're going to evaluate, we're going to call uh, make move and then we're going to um, after we make the move we're going to evaluate the score for it by calling current value is equal to max and that number is going to come back with 10 so current value is going to get a value of 10 then we're going to come back in this loop and we're going to current value is going to get a value of 5 and we'll see is 5 greater than or equal to 10 no it's not right so 10 is our highest seen value in this tree and we'll see that we'll come to this tree and see between 5 and 
seven later and see that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was at I was at the wrong level. Ten and five come up to ten here, right? So right. So that's min and max. All right. So I will stop here, and uh, in the next video we will continue. With, there's going to be one more function that we need to implement, really, is, which is just execute that puts this all together. And we will see uh, the basics of Minimax working. Uh, well, actually, we'll have one more step to do, which is to implement the board evaluator. Uh, and then we'll see the basic uh, Minimax, our first AI, uh, working. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, please make sure to like, uh, like and subscribe.